AI and Joe Pierce by Bring Yahoo Finance. Let's back see. Over to Davos, Switzerland, where Brian Sazi and Julie Hyman are standing by with the Mercer CEO. Thanks so much, guys. And indeed, we are here with the CEO of Mercer, Martin Fervon. Uh, it's a giant human resources firm with 23,000 of its own employees, but of course, consults on human resources issues for many, many multiples of that. Martin, thank you so much for being here. First of all, as you know, the buzzword of this Davos is AI. And um, there is concern about jobs. We've been having an AI and jobs conversation with a lot of people. We've been hearing the same thing from a lot of people, which is AI is not necessarily coming for your jobs. It's going to make things easier. Do you think employees believe that? It's interesting because we've just run a quite intensive survey of 16 countries, about 200,000 inputs, and 90, oh, they're actually 90% of employees surveyed said they want to use it. 60% of them are afraid that it'll take their job away. So there's a bit of a paradox or a conflicting sentiment towards AI. Um, and um, will it take some jobs? Definitely. Um, net net, I think, will mean new types of jobs to uh, help us embed AI and maintain AI in the workplace. And also, I do believe that we will be seeing augmented power of the human beings through utilization of, of AI, generative AI in particular. Um, so I think it's a short-term, medium-term, long-term thing. Um, you might see it uh, in the short term, it'll take time before it's at scale. In the medium term, there might be some movements, but I think in the long term, like many other technology, we'll see just a shift of what's required, mm -hmm. but I don't think it'll take away, it'll take away some jobs, but it'll create some new jobs. With the companies and leaders that you talk to, are they prepared to upskill their workforce? How much are they invested in this? Yeah, it's, um, there's a lot of talk, uh, but at the same time, um, you know, what's interesting, and um, the same survey, it's a 50% of the, the people surveyed said they were using it at least once a week. So what's interesting with Gen AI is that it is so easy for us to understand what it does. Maybe not how it does it, but what it does. We can all think about, I'll prompt it to create a first draft of this, or do research on that, give it a summary, so we get it. And I think there's power, and we're talking to our clients about that, to your question, about lifting all boats, because it's a bit like internet, everybody uses it today. So very, very quickly we'll see, we see everybody starting to use it for different you know, usage, <laughs> personal, professional, mm -hmm. and therefore I think, first of all, we need to democratize access, we need to do it in a way that's controlling the risk of you sharing your data out. Right.
construct of declining working population uh, size it's quite interesting because we need to keep growing uh, that's the base of our economies um, so in other words you're saying if there's this roll off of people retiring and the overall workforce is shrinking that if we're making the existing workforce more productive that that will be helpful is that key? interesting we also at the same time need to make sure the older population continues to be productive longer because they live longer they need to finance a longer life but it, it's it's part of the solution I think. Are, are you in the camp that as ai spreads it will create more inequality that's a danger that's definitely a risk so ai as we all say is a, there's the risk of data leaks there's the risk of uh, errors and, and uh, falseness <laughs> But there's the risk also of who has access again. Um, so you need to be very careful. I was um, having some discussion with the European Commission today, and they were talk- looking at digitalizing the world, but giving access to, the, to Europeans on Wi-Fi across everywhere, because that would be the, the, the entry point. If, you're, if you don't have access to that, how can you have access to AI? So absolutely, I think there is a risk of the gap widening. Uh, it's interesting. Yeah. I don't know the um, in the U.S. for example, the gap that had been widening for forty years has started to shrink a little bit in the last couple of years since the pandemic has kind of ended. Not ended. Um, so we'll need to be very watchful of any effect that way um, in access. Martin Favon, CEO of Mercer. Thank you so much. Good to see you again. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. So guys, this me just told you that AI has jo kai countries to handle rahi hai. कि ए आई आ गया अदरवाइज और जॉब को क्या हो जाएगा एवरी वन सम कंट्रीज आर नॉट स्केयर एंड सम आर स्केयर बिकॉज ऑफ द लूजिंग जॉब्स बिकॉज ए आई जी डिड एवरी थिंग फॉर गाइज एंड लेट मी डर यू वन थिंग मोर कि मैं जहाँ पे रहता हूँ ना वहाँ पे मेरा एक फ्रेंड आई हैव वन फ्रेंड ही वर्किंग इन सम वेयर इन नॉट रिफॉर्म एंड ही यूज ए आई एंड टू गिव द डेट आउट समथिंग आई डोट नो वाई एंड नाउ ही हैव Uh, no longer deal with uh, this company and in audit form. So <laughs> in audit form, you know what the algorithm and everything. So उसने भाई साहब ही use किया AI का AI उनको पता चल गया company को कि ये तो AI है कर रहा है use. तो उसके बाद उसकी job चली गई पर क्यों चली गई क्योंकि AI भाई आप कुछ भी लिखो ऐसे सारा कुछ data script कुछ भी algorithm पर coding decoding everything you will by find in ai and ai actually according to me and for the social media stars i am not a star by the way <laughs> i'm a superstar so ai actually be honest now ai do everything if you want to find a script for anything even for example if i want to make a video for youtube just search anything in chat gpt for example then you will get everything so it's uh, really nice according to me and i don't know if about other countries or actually it's not about countries about person to person mm, but yeah and don't forget to watch the original video why yahoo finance the original video link in description go over there and enhance your knowledge